Hi everyone, welcome uh, to my channel. Uh, in this video I will show you how I painted this uh, cat with watercolor. Uh, the video is pretty detailed so that because of that it's pretty long but it's it's because it's detailed it's probably will be very useful to 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 learn and replicate the techniques. Uh, there are two main techniques uh, the kitchen salt and a washback uh, which is used often used in watercolor and I used a lot on this painting and many others and I have two separate videos one about these two techniques and there is a separate uh, video about the um, the tools and the materials I use uh, in this video but it's it's uh, it's the same um, materials and tools that I usually use for cat painting. Um, the the video is uh, sorry but it will be a little bit chaotic because uh, I'm new to this and, the, and the, uh, I made mistakes but uh, I think the painting part is pretty clear and uh, the instruction and how to do the paintings it, it will be fine. Uh, usually I really don't like to use photos, uh, I usually paint from life, but you obviously can't do this with a cat. So I either take photos of cats or I search the internet for some random cat photos and uh, I display it front of me on a monitor about a meter away because front of me there is a big paper so it cannot be closer and um, I'm looking at it and uh, while I'm painting. So here I show you the, the photo I used for this painting. It's pretty blurred but it's it's not a problem. I just like the, the pose, the, the movement, the, the body posture. So let's start. So I take my 18 by 24 inches paper which in this case is an Archie's um, cold press from a block and actually I like to keep the block but in this case, case it was fall apart and I just take one single sheet and I take my watercolor pencil like very neutral grey and uh, front of the monitor I see the cat I'm painting and I just sketch it out that's not that important unless you want to add tiny details with uh, masking fluid. And so that case you really need to know precisely where you want to put like, for example, uh, whiskers. So you sketch it out just to have some kind of roadmap uh, for the masking fluid especially or just get the ratios right. So when you're ready with that, you take your masking fluid. It needs some shaking because um, it it's usually separates the ingredients inside the bottle. And uh, then you take a stick or some kind of kind of, like sharp object. I really like the. Um, the Asian uh, reed stick, uh, I will show it. Um, and you stick it in the mask masking fluid, you can see it in my hand. And then you draw the, the lines, the fine lines you want to keep white. And of course, um, it's not, uh, when you stick it in, uh, it's usually pick up a lot so it's hard to make thin lines so usually I make just one line on a piece of paper next to me to, to remove the excess and then I'm using the, um, the, the rest to make thin lines. For thick lines you just dip it in that's fine and um, it's great with the masking fluid that if you don't like what you did, you can easily remove it and redo it. 
So here you can see I choose to draw a little bit the eye, just keep it uh, so because the, the, the face is really black. I want to make sure that it's not stained the paper. So after I will have trouble to get really bright yellow eye. So uh, I, I put some on the eye and there is a really uh, whitish highlight on the nose and the chin and the edge of the ear. So I cover those. With masking fluid, you always have to wait until complete dryness, either if you want to change it, remove it, or if you want to start to paint, you can't do it until it's not completely dry. It needs to be entirely 100% dry. So here you can see I'm scrubbing off, which I don't like. And um, then I remove by hand. Make sure your hand is not like sticky especially not cream like you didn't apply cream before because then you stain the paper and the, the watercolor won't stain the paper where you stain it with a, a, like fat like cream so make sure you like take off all the little scrubs like either by hand or you can just hold it up and Remove it, correct what you didn't like uh, previously, like for example, I wasn't happy with the whiskers and so I redraw them here. So after you're done with this and you dry uh, the masking fluid entirely, then you take your spray bottle and just spray it with plain water until it's pretty wet everywhere so yeah make sure there is no space open it's kind of you want to accumulate some liquid on a surface this is not a particularly thick paper um, I don't know the thickness but I will let you know when I'm talking about the, um, the, the materials used so and then I use my flat big brush it's a it's not nothing special it's just a big flat like rough hairbrush um, I make sure that I equalize the, the wetness everywhere uh, so when I start to work I want to really like a nice moist uh, paper so regarding water I like to use a lot so I you can see on the right side I have two kind of large bowl of water uh, the bowl is better if it's either transparent or white because you really want to see how dirty is your water. And as soon as it's getting dirty, you have to change it because watercolor don't like dirtiness. With the cat, that's not like crazy huge problem, but it can be a problem. So even with the cat, when I'm not really using like light colors, light bright colors, like for example in landscapes, I still really like if my um, my water is fairly clean or I have a second bowl just in case if it's reached a point so I don't want to use it any longer and then I take my big fluffy uh, brush um, this one is a Princeton Neptune numbered size 8 but just use your yeah, visual visuals to to get the size right because between brands the numbering is a little bit I think all over the place or even the type of brush uh, number differently so uh, so I take my fluffy brush and the diluted lamp black watercolor from a little bowl and I start to put up the big um, areas when so you, I just take look the photo and where I can see big blobs of black I just put them up but uh, careful to leave out the light areas or the different coral areas and then I can start to use my second color because this is a turtle shell cat so I will need a second color which is um, transparent orange in this case and you can see the orange catch up on a black very fast and I sometimes it's not good sometimes it's okay 
So I wash my brush a lot and uh, it, it this, at this point you can, it's very fluid regarding, you can change a lot. Um, and you, you need in your hand at least two, three of, uh, I'm using Kim Vibes because it's kind of not too cheap, but uh, it's it's kind of pricey, but it goes a long way if you buy a few box and uh, it's really good because it's not leave uh, particles on a paper. Tissue paper won't work or toilet paper won't work. They just fall apart and it's sticking to everything. So don't even try. Maybe kitchen towel or some cloth can work. Uh, maybe other people have better ideas. I, I'm not. This is what I'm using for a long time and I'm really happy with it. So you need several clean and I usually not throw away the old ones because I like to take of wet nuts from my brushes if I have to from the with the old ones which are pretty like colored from previous paintings but um, I'll keep several around me dirty and clean and so if you wet up the area you don't like you can easily remove with the Kim wipe although be careful because Kim wipe can precipitate colors if you not careful which side and area you use so always make sure you take a little brief look before you remove things because you can really mess up your things with dirty tissue uh, paper but also you can use your brush so you just dry up the area remove as much paint as you can and then take a very very clean brush wash it out and then you can remove it uh, remove more paint and you just repeat this with the paper and the brush until you are happy uh, with the result uh, as you saw it on the leg I did. <laughs> so you kind of continue to put uh, like basic big blobs of colors paint on on the paper but as you can see I switched to a smaller brush this is much springier um, so you can be a little bit more precise with it it's also a Princeton it's called Princeton Aqua Elite round 16 and it's smaller than a previous one this is what I meant with inconsistent numbering so you take a, a little bit smaller brush I, sometimes it's not necessary because the other brush has pointy end but I like it because it has like a little bit harder um, point so you can you can start to put like smaller you can see now I am putting much smaller regions uh, up uh, like more precise um, things uh, and yes keep keep your brush clean keep your wash back you don't like it's it's time now because after it's dry you can't do it so until everything is wet you you have a lot of chance but you it's a short window so you have to use it smart you always it's it's what they're good is like you have to work fast and you can see now i was very unhappy with the placement of the tail so i took my big wash brush and i can wash off pretty nicely this is why you need many bowl of water because you need to do this with very clean one so what I do is clean up my brush, wash it off, and then clean up again, dry it again, and remove the gray water, and wash it again, dry it off, and yes, try to remove as much paint you want, you can. But since these this cats are really, I, I like, they, they look like they are in movement, so I'm not bothered by some leftover paint. Actually, I think it's given a nice movement to it. Uh, on the end, it won't be very strong, but it will be lightly visible usually, uh, because you can't eliminate 100%. But I usually, not always, but usually those are happy accidents. Sometimes not happy accidents, but uh, yes, I, I think in this case it won't be a problem. So I keep doing the same thing. Um, so use the, the Kim wipe, the brush, the clean water. Usually at that time I'm going with the smaller brush, but I usually not going smaller than this. That's probably the smallest I, I honestly think. 
uh, now you really try to look precise um, uh, because the papers start to dry you can put up like smaller line kind of labels as soon as the paper dries out uh, you you need to start to do these things because um, uh, before you can't do it because it's 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 it will flow so so that's the point when it's fairly dry but not not entirely you can start to put up like pre more precise thing of course you you can revet the paper partially and everything but um it's it require um like knowledge because if you put too much water it we can just flow on the cat and it just wash off everything wash together all the colors like a, like a mud it will flow everywhere and um so just try to go with the with the with the drying process so first just use those very big blobs because it will flow because of the wetness of the paper and then go with the smaller and then go with the line structure uh, on the on the end when a paper is closer to dry it's not dry just don't misunderstand me it's just drier it's dry enough to not let the paint flow entirely every it still will flow and um so so try to make those little corrections uh always look look up for a few seconds look down up down and then compare where you need to make changes um and yes you need to work fast because the watercolor is like that it, it has a very short window until you can work well and and then um use some time to remove highlights if there are any um same method uh, make things pretty like soaked and use either your big brush dried up or or paper to to remove and correct put the fine details uh, up like I'm doing on the leg now and then yeah check for tiny highlights that make the final result more interesting so not just the big stuff, but also tiny wash bags um, can be done now until it's dry, but later not. Some line drawing again. Little wash back on the edges uh, until until the paper is fairly dry. You will see changes. It will flow to places even places you don't want so I usually keep my eye on it uh, because uh, even if I'm not working on it I need to interfere with flows I can see one now on the on the right side on around the leg especially so yeah uh, yeah keep your eye on it and because it's really there is a window and it's closed and you can't remove anything or it won't look good just will look messy and dirty uh, if you have splatters that's also good to move uh, remove uh, now uh, not let them dry on the paper because it will stay of course it will happen that's normal but like big one which are almost like have a meaning like something flying around the cat that that cannot stay there some tiny speckles it's fine it's it's part of the process i think uh, it's okay um i think i i just correct myself i switched to one smaller brush actually so i used three brushes um and the smallest was also a princeton um uh, aqua elite it was size eight but of course it's not the size size eight as the princeton neptune <laughs> size eight it's like 20 times bigger that one so yeah um that so i used three different brushes uh plus the the flat wash brush uh which i used to wet the paper and uh and i also it's very useful when you have to wash off big big 
chunks of paint Th that's good to have really yeah so now i'm adding more a little bit more of the orange and that big highlight coming from the left side uh, it was like just a like a the removing paint there yeah so yeah if it's if you do something and you immediately recognize it's not great just remove as fast as possible that's the fastest way if it's too much paint don't remove directly maybe just add a little more water and then remove it's, it's probably a better result usually uh, than just trying the, the the more dense paint is more staining so it's better to just dilute up and this is how I sometimes use the see I use like uh, correcting like big uh, big edges and stuff with my big flat brush keep it clean because if you forget <laughs> that it was used you can beside removing <laughs> instead of removing paint you will put more dirt <laughs> around so yeah just keep keep in mind how clean is that Around this point, you can wait a little bit. It's drying, when, and then you just keep eye on it. Just make small changes. Wash where uh, unwanted flow starts, or yeah, just if you don't need to do anything just don't do it and watercolor that's one of the hardest things to stop like usually the 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 less experienced the people it's always overdoing is the problem not that not the opposite the opposite not happens honestly it's it's always overdoing and yeah so it, if you like it better just to stop there don't continue not worth it yeah so again i had a problem with the tail <laughs> um i just don't like that it go out that too much especially on the top of the cat because when i see the photo that's not the tail that's like the cat so i want to make sure it's not read as a tail in a weird sideways on the on the cat um and you just saw that I used my big brush to add some water uh, to two places, like below the face and uh, the big highlight, uh, both on the left left side. And uh, yes, so those are the effect often called in watercolor the cauliflower when you add water and it's washed back uh, the paint and that need to happen exactly in a given time point during the painting because if it's too wet the wash black wash back won't happen it will be just more wet and if it's too dry it won't do the wash back of course uh, you need a big like you need some experience to not add too much water um, because then it will just wash everything so uh you can see this too big water puddle now and that's generating for me the cauliflower and in this case i add some kitchen salt um it's hard to not overdo it try not to overdo it don't pour it everywhere so because this kind of cat has this very tiny color speckles in in the fur and the salt really can give you that effect and um yeah so just try to add to few places because otherwise we look weird and it's just normal kitchen salt and that's the same with as a cauliflower it's need to add when when it's not too wet and not too dry so something between when you look from sideways it's not shiny anymore but obviously wet that's when the both the washback and a and a kitchen salt work the best and so then when you feel it's kind of ready it's not ready of course there are more work to do but when it's kind of ready just stay with the painting until it's leaking or or it has really wet areas because you you will see things happening and so you just need to make small adjustment while it's drying but it's not like you continuously working so i will not recording this time this can be about 
probably 20 30 minutes i don't know just make sure if you see big flaws or some correction you want to add because it's dry enough now so you can add it or stuff like that or you can see those little uh, um, uh, speckles was on the right side on a leg i removed it so you you just watch it and then watch it and then you don't need to watch it just need to wait until it's entirely entirely dry so then you can start to remove the um, scrub of the dry masking fluid uh, i usually just use my hand and it's the same with the salt so uh, if it's entirely dry you can start to remove the salt um, carefully um, where the salt is, it's usually stay a tiny bit of wetness because salt is ki keeping the, the, the water there. Uh, so be careful not to like uh, remove with your hand and then it's a lot of paint coming with it. And sometimes I use a big brush, but I don't think it's necessary. Also probably not, don't use your best brush like I just did. And yeah, scrub carefully the, the masking fluid. Um, if it's wet, it will tear the paper with it, so don't even, not worth it to try, so just make sure it's, it's really ready, and then I just hold up the paper to remove most of the things coming off, um, yeah, if it's just this little amount, it's fine, there are tools to do that, which I never used, um, so I, I, I cannot talk about it, but yeah, just I just use my hand to remove um, most of the, the masking fluid. Yeah, and make sure you really remove it because I don't know what it will cause later. I had bad experience a lot actually with masking fluid. So I took out the painting six months after and there was yellow, like ugly yellow lines and colors. <laughs> So after I remove all, or hopefully all, I start to touch up the the, the painting. Um, actually, in the eye I use a little, some kind of yellowish color. Not, I'm not using exactly the transparent orange I used for the painting, so I forgot to mention that in the materials, but I think you can really do it with the colors we used, but I used a little bit more yellowish than than the transparent orange um yeah i put very just very very lightly on it and uh, you can see on a photo it's it's in a shade it's not a bright eye it's even it's hard to for me it's hard to know it's the eye for sure or it's the it's the light on the on the just above the eye on that bone uh, like uh, protruding out above the eye so yeah um i touch up a little bit most of the white area because it's just too bright uh, what i usually use i just uh look through like a very almost closed eye and try to see how the darkness levels of different things and uh, when you do this with the photo the eye is not uh not bumping out at all so i will make it darker and i immediately recognize that i is like too the right eye is i mean the, the for us on the right side it's too much out so i had to correct a little bit that and also i um yeah i don't like it this kept looking a little bit done so the eye i want it smaller and that is as as obvious so i need to touch these points uh, also the whiskers i i usually especially the beginning uh, you know because the the tool how you draw it it just sometimes leave a little bigger thicker starting points of the lines of the whiskers so i like to make those disappear so not starting just like a sharp line out of the face so I touch up that um, a little bit with a color just to make them a little bit faint, not, not as bright. So yeah, like uh, 
cover it with a light grayish or whatever color um, and uh, the ear is really precise on that cat so you can really see the edge so it's nice to have some definition in some place some place some place you don't need to do it just leave it fluffy and furry like a cat so you don't need to draw every single thing sharp out um yeah i i think that yeah that light on the nose it's a little bit too bright so i carefully make it a little bit smaller like shorter and thinner also but yeah just remove some whiteness there and uh, um, yeah, just try to touch up um, wherever you see it's not great or you can you can touch and change things in last minute so yeah, I try to make that eye a little bit more, pulling that eye more to the middle. So I remove um, like lightness from the edge, and I try to add lightness in the in the middle side. So it's pulling a little bit more in inwards to the face. Yeah, not everything possible to change at that point. I try to wash back, but as you can see, it's at this point it's not great. <laughs> Your chances are low, so this is why I always say that watercolor has the working window, and after that is not much you can do. You can do something, but sometimes that's the point when you when you really destroy it. So it's almost I would say it's okay to have some a not precise place in the watercolor the watercolor is at least this style is not about that um, so I add a little I, I, I don't want a cat just standing in this white space like a like a cutout so I just add some shade around or or some definition um, like like suggesting 3d space um, and um, yeah just be careful like again easy to overdo it so I often like go very like add a little remove from it yeah I don't want to add too much honestly like just just a little bit of something and I uh, I I look for places where I can when I need to where I need to touch and there are orders so I worked on the eye I need to wait a little bit until it dry if I go back right away then it the 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 space I left out will be dark uh, too dark so I had to wait a little bit go back again there uh, don't be impatient if if it's not ready to retouch don't touch it because it the it will just you know you added that light yellow and it will just suck the black in because it's not dry yet so you need to wait and then do it then go other places until like yes so whatever wherever you feel that need to touch or if nothing nothing need to touch then just wait don't be impatient because you can really destroy things last minute easily and I did a, a lot uh, and you never know maybe I will do it even now so yeah be careful so I forgot to mention sometimes just a very little bit I use this I don't even know how it's called it's uh, it's a pen with black ink in it probably it's called faber custer pit with 2t p-i-t-t -T, artist pen and i using the very small one uh, for these touch-ups the small or extra small tips um, Uh, I use 
around whiskers, signature, and like just very fine lines um, if you need it. Yeah. Um, I found the uh, left eye still t uh, still too big and too round. Uh, yeah, and the other eye is just I'm trying to pull it more in the middle with the with the changes um, because it was too much out from the face, and I wanna give a little bit this down looking shape, so not the round up looking cat cat eye shape but looking a little bit more done and some definition around the face but again I don't wanna go don't wanna like overdo it <laughs> it's a it's a tricky balance honestly Yeah, until I'm waiting, I'm signing. <laughs> it's I had a lot of problem for getting signing, so I sent out uh, for buyers without signature, and then it was a trouble. So I just make sure it's there for sure. I still found I think the nose is still too bright, so uh, that's I wanna retouch still and. After that, not much I want to do. Maybe the tail need a little attention and, and that, yes, that bright spot was a little bit too bright. And yeah, I want to make sure it's obvious that that little bump is the butt, not the tail. So I add a little definition there and A little bit on a leg, just to some drawing on it. And I think I'm pretty much done. 